Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Transfer Portal Window opening back up in one of those programs that we know is going to be playing a major factor. Mike Elko, the Texas A&M Aggies, want to have two different conversations to kind of kick off the transfer portal for Texas A&M. That first conversation is, all right, what positions on this Texas A&M roster do we think Texas A&M could benefit from going to the portal and addressing? And then I think the second conversation that I want to have is take a look at some early names that are in the transfer portal that I think would make a lot of sense for this Texas A&M program. Again, we're going to continue to kind of break this situation down over the next couple of days as we see more names hit the transfer portal. Really excited to get into it before we do. And as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Texas A&M Aggie fans. I mean, this is a program that we broke down about every single commitment during that winter portal window. The amount of support y'all have shown the fellas truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into this one. Now, I would love to hear some feedback from you guys as well in terms of I'm going to go over this Texas A&M roster, tell you guys some of my thoughts and ideas on where I think Texas A&M could address whether you agree, whether you disagree, would love to hear some of your feedback in the comment section. Now, the first position that I think Texas A&M could really address is that linebacker spot. And obviously, you have Torrey in York, who is one of the better linebackers in the country heading into 2024. I don't think there's any way around that conversation. But I look at this linebacker room and say, outside of Torrey in York, how many guys are proven commodities on this Texas A&M roster? You have a guy in Scooby Williams who – Neff, Florida was kind of a wild ride. And this is a guy that has all the physical traits that you desire. Quite frankly, I think he's more of an edge rusher than an off-ball linebacker. Missed a lot of tackles at Florida. It was sloppy at times. This is a guy that was never that consistent at the SEC level. Now, I will say, Jay Bateman brings him over for a reason. There has to be some sort of confidence in there with Scooby Williams. But so far from what we've seen, he's not necessarily a proven commodity. You look at Alex Howard coming from Youngstown State. He just hits the transfer portal, so I think you're a little bit thin from a number standpoint. And then you have guys like true freshmen that are you feel good about. It sounds like Damian Sanford is going to be the other off-ball linebacker for Texas A&M. And again, not a knock on Damian Sanford. He could wind up being kind of like a Tory in York who was underrated throughout the high school process, breaks out onto the college football scene. But I look at this Texas A&M linebacker room and say, I think it could use some veteran presence and that one body that kind of elevates what the floor could be for this Texas A&M linebacker room. Now, the guy I want to talk about really quick is Nikai Hill Green. Now, many of you guys know I'm a Michigan fan. Nikai Hill Green, a former Michigan Wolverine. Nikai Hill Green played some very good football for Michigan. And he kind of got squeezed out by the nature of having two NFL linebackers in that room with him. He goes to Charlotte. Has a phenomenal year in 2023. Guy that had over 75 tackles, nine tackles for a loss. I think he checks both boxes that you're looking for for this Texas A&M program. And one is he's played a lot of football. Two, has played at the Power 5 level. And three, has played good football. We know he can be a solid linebacker for this Texas A&M program. Whether he's a starter, whether he's just providing that quality depth for that Texas A&M program, I think that would make a lot of sense for a guy like Nikai Hill Green to wind up in College Station. That's probably my favorite linebacker that Texas A&M is able to get in terms of those SEC transfer rules. We'll continue to update that list as it plays out. Now, I want to go back to another position group that I think would make sense for Texas A&M to go out and address, and that is the interior of this Texas A&M defensive line. And that's going to be for two reasons. One, any chance Mike Elko is going to get to make this line of scrimmage play better, he's always going to take that up. But I think the second conversation is you look at the inside of that Texas A&M defensive line, and I think you want to make sure you have enough bodies and enough quality depth to really be competitive in the SEC. That is something we talk about all the time. You have some star power on this defensive line. You got to make sure you have the numbers. I think you have some young guys that you're really excited about, but not necessarily proven commodities. Could you go out and get a – interior defensive lineman that really has played a lot of football at a high level and kind of improves that depth. Now, I think the second conversation is 
you want to make sure Shamar Turner, at least in my opinion, stays on the edge. And I know Shamar Turner could be a very quality three tech, four Texas A&M, but I look at guys like Nick Skirt and Shamar Stewart, Shamar Turner, and say, I want those guys on the edge because that's probably where they're at their best. And so you want to be able to ensure that you keep Shamar Turner in his best position. And so the inside of that defensive line, I think could be a spot where you address some depth concerns. And I think the one guy that really stands out for me, we've talked about him in connection to a couple of different teams. That's Jermaine Lolea, a guy that's had a wild college football career, started it at Arizona State. He goes to Louisville. The main conversation with Jermaine Lolea is when he's healthy, he's been extremely good on the college football field at the power five level. I think the conversation is, has struggled with injuries. He's going into his sixth year, has missed two seasons due to season ending injuries, has played over 1,800 snaps, has a 9% pass rush win rate from the inside. He's up to 310 pounds, just by the way. That's an outdated number. So you look at Jermaine Lolay and say, this would make a, this would check a lot of boxes in terms of the guy that we know is going to be quality depth for this Texas AM program. We're not relying on him to come in and be a game wrecker, but he definitely makes the numbers better for Texas A&M on the inside. And again, Mike Elko, any chance he gets to make this line of scrimmage play better, he's certainly going to take it. Now, the last position I want to talk about for Texas A&M, and I think this kind of highlights how good of a job Mike Elko did in those winter months where you look at this roster and say secondary. I feel really good about the secondary. Your edge rushers, you feel good about on the offensive line, you could have that conversation. That's not where I'm going to go because I look at the offensive line and say those are eight, nine guys that have played a lot of football on the offensive line. And I think the conversation more around the offensive line is what does the development look like? Does Coach Cushing take the best out of these guys? I mean, obviously, Coach Adazio did not do that the last couple of years. So I think a lot of the question on the a and offensive line is a little bit less are these guys good enough and more can we develop them to be reach their potential? And then I think you're looking at a good offensive line, which, all right, gets me to my last point. And that, and that is we're looking at the wide receiver room for this Texas A&M program and say, do they have a wide receiver one, a proven wide receiver one? I'd probably say no. And that's not me knocking this Texas A&M wide receiver room where I've been on record saying, I think it's really talented. And you could argue that Moose Muhammad emerges. You could argue Noah Thomas, that's the fan favorite, emerges. Jade Walker certainly could emerge, but I look at one, you don't have a proven wide receiver one. And then number two, with Jabari Barber going down, maybe the numbers are getting a little bit thin as well. And so maybe do we add a wide receiver in the portal that has that wide receiver one potential? Now I'm going to take you to a guy that I know quite well up in the Big Ten, and that's Keandre Lambert-Smith, who I think is a phenomenal wide receiver that has just wilted away in a dreadful passing attack. And I say, Keandre Lambert Smith checks, I think two boxes. One, I think he gives you that wide receiver one potential. He was the wide receiver one for Penn state last year. That passing attack just flat out stunk. He's a guy that I think has so much potential in a passing attack that actually can be productive with a quality quarterback. And I think, I think that's why it's transferring quite frankly. But I think the second argument is this is a guy that, is just a separator, can kind of fit in wherever you want in that wide receiver room, can play the slot, can play the boundary. And so you bring him in and he's not pigeonholed into one spot, taking away reps. You can just kind of infuse him into this offense in a lot of different ways where I think he's just going to make everybody better, make everybody play in better spots and more comfortable spots. I think he's a versatile wide receiver that gives you that wide receiver one upside, has proven production at the power five level. And I'm not necessarily banging the table for Texas A&M to go out and add a wide receiver, but that's probably a position that I would kick the tires on. I think linebacker is probably, in my mind, the biggest priority. Second is the inside of that defensive line. Wide receiver, offensive line, you could add some guys. Now, I'll say this. I don't get the running back conversation. I think Texas A&M maybe wants a fourth scholarship running back, but I'll look at this running back room and say, Le'Veon Moss, Mar Daniels, Ruben Owens. That is a very, very good running back room. And quite frankly, a running back room that's going to be very hard to convince a transfer running back to come and join because how many transfer running backs are going to come into this Texas A&M program and say, yeah, I'm going to get a lot of work in this running back room. The answer is not many because those are three really good running backs for Texas A&M. We'll cut it there. We'll obviously continue to kind of follow this story as the week goes on, as we get more players 
into the transfer portal. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. The support means the world to the boys. We'll continue to keep you updated, and we'll talk to you all later. Talk. Peace. <laughs>